What is up, Alphas? Welcome back to Kepo Gaming. I know this has been a long time coming. I'm so sorry for how long this video took to come out, but this is going to be the breeding video in depth. Now, I know a lot of people don't know how this works, so I'm going to teach you everything from how to make them do to do, how to get mutations, and what imprinting is. <laughs> So as you can see here, I have a female and male Leistosaurus. The female is currently weighed down. And if the creature is weighed down, they are not going to be able to mate. So make sure that your creatures are not fully weighed down. You can have them in under the yellow and encumbered, but they cannot be in the red. So all you do is you put them both on enable wandering, and then you spam the whistle stop sound and you'll see a bar pop up. This bar will be their mating process. You keep spamming whistle stop until they are completely mated and an egg will pop out. So as you can see here, she's overweighted. She's not going to mate. So give me one second and then let me remedy the situation. So once you get your two creatures in their correct position close to each other, make sure you enable wandering and make sure they're not overweighted and spam whistle stop. As you can see here, here's the mating progress bar. Once that hits 100%, you're going to have yourself a fertilized egg. So once you hit that 100%, you can turn off. Very important, make sure you turn off the wandering, otherwise they're going to wander off somewhere. But you'll have a fertilized egg, as you can see there. So it's going to have a little bar above it, incubation and health. The health hits zero, that's it, the egg's gone. However, the thing you're looking for is the incubation. You want the incubation timer to hit zero. Also, if you need a little bit of help, there's a bar up there that tells you whether it's too hot or too cold. So I'm gonna put it here next to the fire, but if you notice, it was too cold, but now that it's next to the fire, the timer is going down. Five minutes till it hatches. So when the timer hits zero, your egg will hatch and your baby will pop out. The first thing you're going to do is on the top left that you use to put the wandering on, you're going to click on that and claim your dino. Now you want to be quick about this because other people's can take your dinos. So the first thing you want to do is take off wandering and feed your little baby. If they are not fed quickly and rapidly, they will die immediately. So you can see this one, nothing special. It came out with higher base HP by 0.3 and it has a 180% melee damage of its parents. Now what you're gonna wanna do is find something you want nice stats from. In this case, I had a Lystrosaurus with 180% melee, which is extremely high for a Lystro, but honestly, completely useless. You can see the father has 200 and the mother only had like 120, but they both had base HP, so the baby came out with base HP. Now for the fun part, the maturation progress and imprinting. So I'm going to go ahead and let you know all about that. So we're going to start with imprinting first. As you can see here, this Lystro wants Terror Bird Kibble in 33 minutes. So in 33 minutes, you will feed it Kibble and its imprinting bar will go up, which increases its base stats. Now, I will go ahead and show this with the previous creature, which was my Megalosaurus. So as you see here, its base stats is 1800 health, 184% melee, and 100% movement speed. Now at maximum 100% imprinting, it's a 20% boost. So as you can see now, 120% movement speed, 2.2k health, and 2.19% damage. Now, mutations. So this was my female Megalosaurus. It only had 2.8k health and 1.05% melee damage. But after it tamed out, it had a whopping 3k health. As for the male, the male only had about 1,800 health and about 180% melee. So as you can see from the normal baby, they would average around 1.8k health and 184% melee. And this kept happening, you know, time after time. However, I got lucky with a random mutation and the HP massively jumped up. Also, the stamina went up a little bit. Now, keep in mind, mutations are basically random stat buffs. It can happen at random. And not only does it give you a random stat buff, it could also change the color of your dino. So for this one, I had two different mutations, one in health and one in stamina. Now you can only have a maximum of 20 mutations. However, if you breed your tame with a wild again, as in tame something from the wild, you can reset that multiplier. So that's everything. Let's go ahead and round it from the top and let's go a little bit more in depth. Let me get into a little bit more detail. All right.
right, guys, taking it from the top. So if you remember correctly, as I said before, you get them together, you're going to spam whistle stop while they are both on wander until that bar hits 100% and an egg pops out. Now, it's going to take a different amount of time depending on one, pheromones, and two, the type of tame. Smaller creatures usually are faster, while bigger creatures take a bit longer. So this may, like I said, this is going to take a while. So after it hits 100%, it's going to go ahead and poop out an egg. All you're going to do is pick it up, and then we'll go ahead and get into how to tend to the eggs. So here is the egg, and like I said, you have the incubation timer, it's spoil timer, and it's health. So all you got to do is make sure it's at the right temperature, and it will incubate. Once the time hits zero, it will hatch. So let me go ahead and take it over to the fire here. And then obviously, since it's nice and cold outside, I need to warm it up a little bit. So that way this egg gets nice and heated up. So that way it starts incubating. So there we go. It's the right temperature. It's no longer says it's freezing. And now the incubation has begun. Let's go ahead and wait till it hits zero. Now, if an egg is too cold as a low level, you could just use campfires to warm it up. As a higher level, if it's too warm or too cold, usually people set up rooms that are 4x4 four four with a whole bunch of AC units in them, and that'll cause almost any egg to hatch, even a Giganotosaurus. So here we are. The timer is about to hit zero. Make sure you have food in your inventory, so that way when the baby comes out, you can feed it. So I'll top left, hit the button, go ahead and claim it, and bada bing, bada boom, it's yours, and turn off wandering. People can steal these dinos, so be very careful that you're the very first one to claim it. So, as you can see, it wants to cuddle in 36 minutes, and its maturation progress has begun. At 10%, it can eat out of feeding troughs, if you have a feeding trough available. As you saw there, this one did not get a mutation. I do believe it's a 10% chance. So, I'm going to go ahead and feed it, and just sit here and babysit it until it's 30 minutes. This is also the time you check for a stat mutation. So what you do is you get two wilds, completely wild, tame them male and female, and breed them together until you get a baby male and a baby female that have the same stats. So for me, in this case, they all came out with 18k HP and 184% melee. You'll know you get a mutation when you hatch another one and the stats are randomly boosted. This is a 10% chance, and this can only happen 20 times. You can only have 20 mutations. It's also worth noting that all these mutations are completely random, so you could have a super high level T-Rex and all the babies come out with extra oxygen, which they don't really need. So now we're back to the baby, and as you can see, it's almost time to get it imprinted in 5 seconds. Here's its base stats, 90, 185% melee with a little bit of movement speed. So now I tap to cuddle, there goes the imprinting percentage, and if you look, now it's got a whole bunch of extra stats, 104 health, 208 melee, a little bit more movement speed, and a little bit more of everything else. So that's basically the gist of it. That's your mutations, that's your imprinting, your breeding, and everything else. So before I go, I'm going to remind you one more time that Dododex is your friend. So as you can see here, a Lystrosaurus takes 16 hours to grow in total, 49 incubation and whatnot. But a Giga, on the other hand would take 12 days, so each creature has its own separate growth rate. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe.